Hey, Jeff Kelderman here with Kelderman Air Suspensions. Today I'm going to make a short video, show you guys how to align your Kelderman Air Suspension lift kit. What we got here, 2011 F-250 with our 8 to 10 inch kit. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what we're going to do, why we're going to do it, and then we'll go into more, some more details later on. What we're going to do is we're going to get this front axle at the factory pinning angle that it came out of Ford with. We're going to do that with the bags at ride height where we're going to be driving this thing all the time. Then we're going to square up the axle forward and back. Once we've got that done, then we're going to go to the rear axle. We're going to set that back at the pinion angle that it left Ford at. That's going to help us minimize our driveline angle, eliminate vibration. We're going to get that set at ride height. Then we will do a measurement from the front axle to the rear axle to make sure they're within an eighth inch of each other. So what we want to do is if you can, before you tear anything off the truck, stock truck, get this pinion angle measurement. This is going to save us some time later on down because we're going to go put it, this axle right back to this same position it was when it left the factory. Just like with the front, if you can get your rear pinion angle measurement, it's going to save you some time with your setup. If we're getting this measurement, we're on a completely stock truck, we're going to get this back real close to this to make sure we got minimal driveline vibration. What we're doing, it doesn't matter if you're halfway through the install with no controls hooked up or if you have uh, customers bringing you a truck that's already been installed that's, that's not driving correctly. But first things first, we're running 40 inch tires on this eight to 10 Ford. So we're gonna run our bag at nine and a half inches tall. You're gonna measure in between these plates, get the bag at nine and a half inches tall. You can do this two ways. One, if the controls are hooked up, air it up manually. If there's no controls on it, let's put the jack stands under it. Really, what works the best is once you get your front bags at eight and a half inches or nine and a half inches, depending if you're gonna run 38 or 40 inch tires, we're gonna go to the back, put jack stands under the back with those airbags around 12 inches tall. Once we've got jack stands on all four corners, we're gonna deflate all the air out of the bags. Whether you just pull the air lines off or you do it from inside the cab, it's totally up to you. But to get this thing aligned up correctly, we need to have the bags at the ride height that this is gonna go down the road at. And again, eight and a half to nine and a half inches, depending on 38 or 40 inch tires. And you're gonna be in the 12, 12 and a half range on the rear. We're gonna get the frame setting on jack stands. So there's no weight on the axles, no weight on the airbags. So right now we have no air in the airbags. Got the jack stand underneath the front of the frame. I'm running 40 inch tires. So I'm gonna run these airbags nine and a half inches tall. So make sure you measure in between the bottom bracket and the top bracket. Overall height, nine and a half inches. Now that we've got that set, we're going to adjust our trailing arms to get our pinion angle to zero. I've got my jack stands under the front. I've also got jack stands under the rear. So my airbags on those are 12 inches tall. All right, we're gonna do a little trailing arm 101 on how to set this thing up. Now it's not gonna matter if it's an initial setup where you're just putting the kit on right now, or if customers brought you a truck that's not driving straight. Keys are, one, you gotta get these bottom two trailing arms within an eighth inch of each other. You gotta get the bottom trailing arms within an eighth inch of each other. You gotta get the top trailing arms within an eighth of an inch of each other. When you start that up on your initial setup, you're gonna be pretty close. because These trailing arms are designed off the CAD files that we get from Ford, so they're gonna be real close. All right, so I'm talking about getting the trailing arms with an eighth of an inch of each other. I'm talking about measuring between the jam nut and the casting back here. This one, 36 inches. So that means we want to get the other side with an eighth of an inch of 36 inches. Now that we have our trailing arms all within an eighth of an inch of each other, we can start doing some fine tuning. Now you're going to be doing some fine tuning to get your pinion angle, okay? And you're also going to use this to fine tune your forward and back. Now this airbag should be straight up and down and the shocks will be straight up and down when you're all done with the installation. So, what you need to know is when you turn these trailing arms, you, for adjusting the bottom, by making the bottom ones longer, it's gonna tilt the axle that way. So, when you do your adjustments, you can only turn these trailing arms a half a turn each time. Do half a turn on the bottom, then do half a turn on the other side. Half a turn on this side, half a turn on the other side. By doing that, you'll keep this thing from binding up. If you try to do more than a half a turn, you go three quarter full turn with one of them, it's gonna bind everything up and it's gonna make for a long day. Again, I can't say it enough, can't emphasize it enough. 
only turn these a half a turn at a time when you're adjusting it. So you're going to use your ability to go forward and back, doing both sides at the same time to get this pinning angle where we want it. We do a good job of lining this up, follow what I'm saying, get our pinning angle where it needs to be. This thing's going to drive straight as an arrow. All right, now we got our front axle straight, pinning angle set, bag straight up and down at ride height, shocks are also straight up and down. It's time to head to the back. The back is really the same thing. We're gonna get our trailing arms squared away within a quarter inch or eighth inch of each other on each side on the bottom, same as the tops. Get the axle squared up. Now, the rear, if you don't have the pinning angle from when the truck was torn apart, or if it's just customer's truck that came in off street, there's a trick you can do by putting a angle finder on the tube where the rear trailing arms connect to, and that should be pretty close to zero. As you can see this one, right at about 0.35 degrees, almost same as zero. Adjust your trailing arms so that that is near zero. Then you can start your test drives and start working on it there to fine tune it to minimize your driveline vibration. One tip to keep in mind, if you're running 40 inch tires in the big bushwhacker fenders, this truck, we actually pulled the front of the bag forward about 3 8 of an inch. What that does is gives us more clearance when we let the air out, make sure the tire isn't gonna come in and rub on the bushwhacker fender. Well, at this point, we're just about done. Just a couple more fine tuning points. One, both axles are straight, but we need to measure them off of each other. What I like to do is measure off the front kingpin to the front of the rear axle housing, measure it on each side, we need to get that within an eighth of an inch of each other. So what we have here is a tape measure against the front of the rear axle housing. And we're gonna measure forward to the front of the kingpin bolt. What we're doing now is we're measuring to the front side of the kingpin here. Looks like we've got about 156 and three quarter. What I'm gonna do is measure that on the other side in the exact same spot. 